Hello and welcome back to another series on this channel. My name is Saiken and today we're going to look into another tactical game. It's time for Shadowrun and since uh, Shadowrun has three different games I selected the one that I like the most uh, because I think it's the most polished. I think it's also the last one uh, that came out of the um, trilogy. So Shadowrun Hong Kong it is. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with uh, Shadowrun, Shadowrun is just like D&D, one of the main role-playing systems and offers a beautiful futuristic cyberpunk world. Big fan of the setting and of course I was hyped when I saw the tactical implementation on the PC, started to play it quite intensively. Um, it is a great game, uh, not as much replayability as other games would have because it's a pretty straightforward RPG, but for the purpose of this run, well, let's uh, dive into it and uh, look at a bit of the tactical combats, which are actually interesting. They are pretty good. So we're going for a new game here. And one of the things that I appreciate with uh, Shadowrun is a lot of uh, modding is happening. So I've uh, downloaded, as you can see, quite a few extra campaigns um, f uh, from the modding uh, community. But we're going to uh, to play the normal standardized Hong Kong uh, campaign. And we're going to play it on hard. There's unfortunately no Iron Man difficulty um, in this game. So we're just playing uh, bronze men. Um, if we die, the campaign is over. Um, I'll explain everything as we go along and let's dive directly into the character creation, which is probably one of the strengths of Shadowrun actually, because character creation is quite free. We're going to play a male character and you can select out of five different races, basically humans, elves, dwarves, orcs or trolls. Um, and you do have a couple of typical archetypes. To shortly look at the archetypes, every uh, race can be every archetype, but the races are a bit different, whilst orcs and trolls are more focused on physical uh, means. Uh, the other races uh, have better mental stats, and humans are quickest to adapt. Uh, in Shadowrun, the experience system is called Karma, and Karma essentially allows you to upgrade all of your stats. It gets exponentially more difficult to increase them, but we're going to take a look at that in a second. Essentially, the setting of Shadowrun, without going too deep into it, um, for those of you who aren't aware, I highly recommend um, uh, looking into it and maybe reading a novel or two. It's uh, besides 40k, probably one of my favorite settings. So there are a couple of like typical archetypes uh, in uh, the uh, the year 2000 and I think 70 where we're uh, playing. These archetypes are pretty uh, stable. One being uh, the uh, street samurai, which is essentially a mercenary, a hired gun. Uh, that m modifies parts of his body with uh, cyber technology. A mage, uh, which is uh, called her hermetic uh, caster, uh, so a very intelligence and logic-based uh, caster, and his uh, pendant or the alternative, a shaman, um, a nature-based, uh, almost druidic uh, caster, um, that is focusing on a so-called totem, a spirit that guides him. Then we do have the technology-based characters, a decker, um, which is pretty much like uh, Matrix, as you um, are familiar uh, with it, uh, focusing on um, hacking the virtual world, uh, a rigger, which does a similar job, but focuses on actually combining his um, his brain or connecting his brain with drones. And finally, a psych uh, psychical adept or key adept, um, who is uh, focusing uh, the magic in in uh, to his body and essentially raising the strength there. Um, so what are we going to play for this playthrough? I think to keep it simple, um, since I was running as an hardcore elf uh, mage the last time and had a blast, uh, I think we're going to take something completely different uh, this time. We're going to do... Um, uh, somewhat interesting uh, build. How about we're taking a human? Um, 
just needing to find someone who is fitting persona for us. One thing is definitely uh, definitely given there are enough choices like they gone the extra way to create enough choices. Okay, we're going to take uh, him and we're going to customize our character class ourselves. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do. As a human, um, you get three extra karma. So you start with 58 instead of 55. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it's actually a pretty decent um, a pretty decent trade-off. And one thing that this game does very well is um, it starves you with resources, so you can't maximize everything, at least not in a single playthrough. You need to play New Game Plus in order to do that, um, kind of making the game ridiculously easy. But we want the challenge, so let's go for that. Um, so, there are a couple of stats. Let's go through them real quick. Buddy is your physical uh, toughness and determines how many hit points you have and how much cyberware you can build into your body. Quickness. Has, to, has everything to do with uh, being able to dodge and the whole suite of ranged combat. So um, different weapon categories as well as the actual ranged combat. Then we do have the uh, physical strength, um, which has to do with throwing weapons, close combat, melee weapons, unarmed strike, and uh, so on. We have intelligence, uh, which not only allows you to skill biotechnology for better healing, uh, but you have basically the decker here, um, allowing you to uh, to create ever so um, improved decks, which is uh, the way of uh, connecting your uh, the technology to connect your brain with the actual matrix or a drone uh, rigger uh, who connects himself with drones. Um, we got willpower. Uh, determining uh, the ability to cast um, and derive from willpower either spell casting or like natural um, adept skills, key adept skills. And finally, charisma, uh, offering you a variety of non combat options, which are quite important in this game, as well as shaman uh, shamanistic uh, summonings, uh, conjuration, and so on and so forth. So, I would like to play a bit of a hybrid character here. I've thought about um, a few nice little tricks that I want to uh, try out, and I want a bit of a different flair uh, than the last time. So we're going with a rigor. Um, one of the things that I, I guess not uh, many playthroughs, or I hope not many playthroughs, are showing. So we're uh, using something completely different. Um, and you will see the other archetypes during our run as well. So we're raising intelligence. Um, and you can see the first point of intelligence essentially costs two, then three, four, five. So I could go all the way up to nine intelligence, but that would almost cost me the entire karma. So it would be very ill-advised to do so. We're uh, going in with a very limited amount for intelligence because I want to take a note here that allows me to take two drones. So drone control allows us to take class C drones, the worst ones, then level three goes into class B drones, and then it allows us to equip two um, drones. And we probably want to go even further because we want to go all the way up to class S drones. Uh, but let's uh, let's leave it uh, there for now. And this tree drone combat essentially allows your drones to be buffed. Highly recommend using that. Uh, plus one armor for the drones is great. The next one is plus five accuracy, which is absolutely fantastic. If you played XCOM, you would know that's a built-in scope. You definitely want to have that. Uh, plus one dodge, um, which is the drone's ability to take less damage. Um, and dodge in this game effectively negates the entire damage and then uh, plus two hit point damage. Uh, that is awesome because it simply increases uh, the damage. The next one would be another plus two armor and better drones, but we already spent like half of our car uh, karma and we just got started, right? Right, good. So um, we're focusing on intelligence as, uh, as a rigor. We need somebody uh, in, in order to get hit points, every point in body uh, basically increases your hit points by 10. Uh, so I want to be relatively beefy and we're starting with 40. 
don't want to be just like shut down. Maybe we're decreasing it to three. Over time, we're going to increase the cyber affinity. For now, we're fine. Um, but there are nice little cyber weapons and a couple of bonuses that you can uh, get. So that's good. Four body, four intelligence. Um, let's continue with quickness. We're going into uh, we're going three into quickness, um, so that we do have at least some ability to fight ourselves. Um, I want to go um, into range combat. And we're taking rifles. Going all the way up to three. And we will keep rifles here and won't go any further because rifles three allows you to get, uh, mm, allows you. So the rifles basically unlock special fire modes and range combat uh, determines how well you are hitting. There is still the option to go into dodge. And now it's a balancing act because uh, what I want to do is I want to dip really shortly into um, basically key uh, casting. There's a great key ability here um, with only two point uh, with only key casting two, which gives you um, a passive benefits and. Uh, the way that this game models it, it's definitely not the same way in the actual system, but the way that this game here models it uh, is all of the spells and all of the key casting um, share the same slots. So you only have six slots in the game um, and you basically need to determine how to fill them. If you take neither casting nor key um, abilities, you basically waste the slots. So this here is a really easy kind of life hack to, uh, to uh, get all the way up to there. So what we're going to do is we are indeed reducing the rifle abilities a bit. So we only get um, one special attack. We will wait until we are getting to full auto. And instead we're going for key casting too. I want uh, to start with that. We're not going to race that any further. Willpower is great uh, for, um, uh, for mages, but we don't need that. In the actual uh, pen and paper game, willpower allows you also to resist magic better. There's no such thing here. Uh, the only stat that counts uh, for uh, for anything uh, is dodge. And dodge definitely is an important stat. That's why we're skilling a few points into it. We've just um, exhausted all of our points. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. We have 40 hit points to begin with. We got a uh, really decent quickness, uh, got some dodge got at least some ranged combat. We're not a complete um, newbie when it comes to that. Our strength definitely is with drones and drone combat. Um, we got a couple of extra buffs that we could get and that's about it. We're probably a bit short on the charisma department. Um, uh, this year will mean we need to fight our way through everything but whatever. It is what it is. So first name in uh, this uh, regard would be Saiken, uh, last name um, for games. I know it's um, well. You actually see uh, the games, uh, the name in game. Uh, so let's go uh, with Saiken Moonbearer. Uh, and what would be a fitting alias uh, for uh, this character? Um, how about? We call him Sparklight. Good, he has a street name. And that's the day that Sparklight was born. Let's go into the game.
to finish something I should have faced a long time ago. I need you with me. I know we're not blood and we didn't leave things in a good place. But you and Duncan are the only real family I have. Please. If our past means anything to you. Explain more when you get here. I'm begging you. I'm almost out of time. What a stylistic introduction. I love it. So we gotta help an old friend. And who could say no to that? Good. Our friend Raymond Black and I'll narrate the most important uh, pieces because uh, the game unfortunately doesn't have voiceover. Maybe it's unfortunate or fortunate, uh, but I'll give you uh, the rundown of what's going on um, whilst we are focusing on the actual game. This is our friend Duncan, or half-brother, who has, hasn't seen us uh, for a while. Uh, basically, we're coming uh, from Seattle, and um, the two of us are supposed to meet Raymond, our uh, father, our fatherly figure, uh, right here. Unfortunately, it seems that Raymond is not showing up. Duncan has brought uh, his friend along, his co-worker Carter. Uh, uh, Duncan himself is a Lone Star agent. Uh, Lone Star is uh, the equivalent of the police in Shadowrun. And each of us uh, finds out uh, that Duncan hasn't uh, moved, uh, hasn't really moved here. So, uh, a couple of things towards Shadowrun and how it plays. Uh, there's it, It's really a, a super sparse and light interface. You can see you have your mission. Uh, you, you do have a brief overview about your character, and that's, a, that's it. Uh, we start, indeed, with an assault rifle and a drone. Uh, there is a drone right behind us. A med kit for ourselves, a repair kit for the drone, a dog wagon contract, which is kind of a resurrection kit, um, a grenade, and our only key spell so far, which is a passive, unarmed damage is increased by three, and we can activate it to increase the unarmed damage even further if we would ever go into melee. Other than that, there isn't really much uh, uh, that you would need to know, and it's maybe this simplicity which makes Shadowrun uh, a really straightforward and uh, kind of interesting game um, to uh, to play. Like I said, it's probably not a game that you would want to play um, for thousands of hours, but it most certainly is one that you would play for the storyline. Okay, so next up you can see that uh, there are a couple of items uh, um, or a couple of um, objects that we can interact with. Uh, most of which uh, you would see are relatively straightforward. And um, we will now very soon move to the, to the first part of today's uh, episode, which is a group of uh, enemies um, is just running straight at us. And despite our best efforts, keep in mind he's an official police officer, um, we cannot, uh, despite our best efforts, we actually cannot convince uh, them to stay down. Um, so, it's on. Something is wrong. Raymond is missing. 
And the first thing that we are doing in combat is you do have a couple of um, uh, a couple of options on the right hand side here. Uh, if you have a, a drone like I do, you do have control mode. You do have your inventory where you where we could use grenades and so on. And you do have your spells, none of which we're current using. Instead, we're activating our drone. Uh, you can see we had a two representing two time units or two action points. Now essentially being reduced to one, the drone uh, will uh, act as a normal contender. Um, you can see very similar to XCOM, uh, the cover system has been uh, has been implemented here, and we're going to use that to our advantage. The drone takes half cover here, and the 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 cover system is really a bit different. We will come to that um, as you often need to check what sort of cover um, uh, enemies are actually having. So there is light cover, which this person is behind you, which is indicated with like a simple shield. There's medium cover, which is kind of a half-filled shield. Uh, some items uh, give medium cover. You can see the crates here, for instance, give, me give medium cover, whilst uh, the signposts here give light cover. And then there is also full cover that you would see like down here, uh, which is essentially the biggest form of cover. So these are the three different types of cover. However, behind full cover, you cannot peek left and right, so you won't have a line of sight, uh, which means you are actually often playing with half cover or light cover, uh, so medium or light cover. Good. Uh, our friends Duncan and Carter are with us. Carter is a mage. Um, uh, her trait uh, is she has a couple of uh, nice spells actually, and I would say we are going to use her to first and foremost move into position and uh, buff Carter with an aim accuracy spell uh, lasting for a uh, few rounds. Carter moves into um, range. Um, he does not have enough uh, ability points to actually throw a grenade, which would be the right play here. So we gotta see what we're doing with him. Let's start with our drone. Uh, the drone takes a shot uh, against the Institute gunman in the open, hitting him. He has no cover, so a higher chance of being crit. You can see it's almost down to 50% of his health. Um, both uh, Carter and I do have special skills. Um, the gun ability that I've shown you earlier, like the actual gun skill uh, right here, the rifle skill, uh, this is offering you these extra abilities. And the only extra ability that we had um, so far is the aim shot ability, basically increasing one shot by 15%. There we go. Worked like a charm. And we almost got him down. Now, Carter takes some damage. You can see cover sometimes halves the, the damage. Um, and sometimes when he's actually like um, attacked from uh, from the side, he will take full damage. So next up, we do have a healing spell, and healing works a bit different uh, in Shadowrun. You can only heal the last wound that you have taken, which is again an interesting concept because it uh, prevents you from ever healing yourself to full. Uh, you are essentially at the um, uh, at the mercy of like healing once in a while, it has a long cooldown, three turns, um, and you will gradually, sometimes with kind of auto fire, get a lot of wounds for one, two, one, two uh, hit points. So that will make it difficult uh, for you. We're um, giving an armor increase to um, Duncan. You can see right next to his hit point uh, bar, uh, right on top here. There are four uh, bars, so up you can have up to 10 armor. Um, with four armor, essentially it's a flat reduction of all of the damage. So it's great because everyone was targeting Duncan. A uh, question that we could ask ourselves is, do we want to use a grenade in order to deal with these guys? Hmm. 
probably not the worst idea, but it's only a 65% chance to hit, so we're not going to do that. Instead, we do have the burst fire option, and we can simply maw down the mage, leaving this guy still as a problem over here. Um, one thing that we could do is we can start to flank. Going all the way to here would unfortunately take away our ability to uh, to hit some uh, um, to shoot them because full cover uh, denies that vision range. Um, and now you're in one of those situations in the game where sometimes it's actually an efficient way of simply getting a bit closer and starting uh, to shoot even if it's in cover. Um, let's see, we do have two uh, shots and we should probably try to take the 50-50s, but unfortunately it didn't play out very well. Um, you've seen uh, he has healed himself and we've missed all of our 50-50 shots. Okay, Duncan has definitely taken a beating and we cannot afford him to continue like taking that much damage. Uh, we're first of all healing ourselves with a, a med kit and then we need to deal with a thug here. It's unfortunate. Um, Saigon only has one uh, um, sparks, uh, spark light, of course, only has uh, one AP because he's controlling the drone, but he's con uh, he's trading his one ability uh, point into two ability points of uh, the drone. And I would say the drone... Yeah, I don't want to put it into the open, to be honest. So this is another um, interesting part. You can see for XCOM standards, the thug here would not be flanked at all. Matter of fact, he would still be behind cover, right? Since the cover mechanism works a bit different here, as soon as you pass the 45 degrees angle, um, like everything here would be um, uh, considered flanking our unit and vice versa everything like from here onwards to here already flanks uh, him. So this here is actually a shot into flanking, killing him. This is important to know because um, that is quite different co uh, compared to how, um, how it would work in XCOM. We're continuing to hit this guy. Unfortunately, since he's in cover, it's not really working out super well. Might as well start buffing for accuracy. And give everyone a nice little aim buff. Oh wow, that was a pretty critical hit. Um, Healing is not yet back up, uh, so we definitely need to make sure Duncan takes no additional damage. But luckily for us, this guy here is very much exposed and flanked. So let's start hitting him. That's one down. There we go, that's two down. We don't want to use our... Um, our uh, next uh, med kit. So what we're going to use is we are hmm that's a good question. Could he reach the full cover over here? No he could not. Yeah that, unfortunately there is no hunkering down. That's a uh, shortcoming. I would have used it quite a few times. But what we can do is... 
we can heal him. And that's fine, because believe it or not, Carter at a later stage might uh, leave the party. Okay, that was clever. He with, uh, withheld uh, the grenade. Um, but we can now heal Duncan. I still want to make sure that Duncan is in a somewhat healthy condition. Um, Carter can use the medkit. And let's move our drone up. Flanking him. And that's about it. First combat done. There is no such thing as loot in 90% of the combats. You will not see any loot. Um, so you really will have a very sparse amount of items uh, that you that you can actually select. Uh, this here is important to know. I haven't explained it yet. These here are ley lines or uh, dragon, uh, dragon lines. Standing in them makes casting incredibly strong. Uh, it reduces your cooldowns, and um, that is very, very, and makes all of these spells AOE spells. So, um, with a caster, one of the strategies uh, that I implied I was uh, to be um, good enough in, in basically dodging attacks so that I wouldn't die by standing uh, on exposed ley lines and just dominated the battlefield. Good. The game now explains uh, the concept of an ambush, which we could do here. So basically, you can Put everyone, uh, you can click on the gun and put everyone kind of in their position. As a preparation for the actual fight. Um, uh, let's see, we're going to buff Duncan. And since the enemies don't know that uh, that we're going to attack them, we're basically jumping on them. Um, we can buff everyone else. So everyone has accuracy. And there we go. So now we got our full round. Um, the And could fully jump uh, the... Uh, the enemies without them being able to do anything. We're starting with a nice uh, little mana ball, killing one of them right away. Holy shit. Second one is being mauled down by our drone. And Duncan almost kills the street mage. So the enemy has done like quite literally nothing. And we've taken zero damage. So yeah, that is how an ambush works. And as a reward for gunning down uh, these gangers, uh, we even get an extra medkit. Um, only problem that I would have with that scenery is um, the gangers were not necessarily suspicious and a Lone Star Cop wouldn't immediately just gun someone down. That's normally not what uh, Lone Star does. Good, we're picking up a couple of items. We're still looking for Raymond, our father. And we're going to run into quite some action that's going to come up. Well, look at that. Duncan discusses with a um, uh, random troll, together with uh, quite a few, um, quite a few other sh uh, shady figures, 
um, and they seem to be pretty much on edge. They tell us uh, that they were hired and are looking for Raymond as well. Um, and we're trying to talk this one out because we don't want them as enemies. So they just confess they are going to meet Raymond, but apparently uh, the local police, uh, Hong Kong Police Department, uh, has uh, trailed them. And just as we were um, getting to know one another, all hell breaks loose. Bam, bam, bam. Carter immediately dies, and our only objective is take cover, which we're going to do. We're taking cover, and we're taking cover. Apparently, there's a sniper somewhere. Nitra, who was uh, their troll, seems to be dead. And Duncan... Uh, basically says he's a lone enforcer, uh, kind of showing uh, showing off his uh, badge. But um, the police officers are not having it. So the only way uh, for us to get out of this here is to uh, fight our way out of here. All right, we got two additional new characters for our mission here. Um, which uh, will be uh, two characters that you're going to see uh, soon. Garbett, uh, the Red Shaman, and um, Isabel, the Shy Dwarf. Um, she's a Decker, and um, the um, lady is a Red Shaman. Uh, this is going to be our standard party for many of uh, the actual runs. So let's familiarize ourselves with what we can and can not do. First things first, um, I would like to summon a couple of buddies. Um, we are actually summoning an elemental, mainly to get some more, um, some more firepower on the field. The elemental moves up and just keeps them busy. Secondly, we do have a few spells. Uh, so summoning an elemental uh, requires, by the way, these fetishes. Um, and they are quite expensive, but the NPCs kind of regain their uh, equipment between uh, the missions every single time. So you do not really have to worry about it. We're buffing Isabel, our decker. Uh, because Isabel, in typical fashion of a combat decker, uh, has a grenade launcher, which is uh, quite unique, but like was the absolute fantastic weapon. Shouldn't probably shoot our own elemental, so let's take a shot uh, rather over here. And you can see that the grenades steal a lot of damage. All right, Duncan uh, moves up into full cover. And we're taking a good old shot. We are hacking the control of our drone. Drone begins to move all the way forward into full cover. Just double movement. Yeah. And I don't want to sit right next to Duncan because they do have grenades and if you cluster up, they will mess with you. So we're instead staying back. Duncan, being in full cover, takes only very limited damage, but we're now being surrounded. Unfortunately, the drone is being flanked. So probably need, uh, we, are, we probably need to get rid of the guard. Anyways, reloading our um, grenade launcher. Let's see if we can hit the guard. 
Yep, good enough, which means the drone is now in pretty much full cover and can take a couple of shots. Um, I would say the drone has a good accuracy. So we can just leave her there and take normal shots into the open. Yep, that's a good hit. That's a pretty solid hit. We are continuing with flashlight to stay where we are and we need to get rid of uh, the flanking target. Uh, so Duncan focuses fully on her and here's an interesting concept like we can give uh, the ghost more ability point uh, more action points but there is a chance that it will simply go rogue and disappear and I think that just happened well effort at least it goes rogue uh, mm, onto the enemy. That's why you need a skill called Spirit Control. Uh, because essentially what has happened is our mage has just lost uh, her connection to the spirit. We're healing Duncan and the Wind Dancer dancer here uh, mm, is now an enemy. Everyone has the aim buff. Taking shots at the elemental. Second like um, sparklight moves up. Now we're taking single shots. That was a bad idea. Very nice. Okay. So. Let's move over here into cover and we're slowly but surely like getting closer. We're still forced to stay in cover, but luckily the enemy um, currently is just waiting. There's not much that, uh, that they are doing. There are a few drones as you can see. But since Isabel has the ability to um, to hack, she essentially decks into um, the vehicle here and disables those drones. So two less enemies to take care of. We're moving up. And I would say we're kind of building a nice little fire line here and then will start to engage yeah the drone can heal itself and that's pretty much it we do not have overwatch yet you need a higher uh, weapon ranking in order to get overwatch All right, so the chances are actually quite slim. I don't like that. So we're going to go a little bit closer. Move in our front line. Yeah, and they do have heavy cover, which is absolutely annoying. But still, we can uh, we can hit them. Um, how about we're hasting our little dwarf, which gives her the ability to move twice and still use the grenade launcher. Very nice. That's exactly what we're talking about. 
They're almost dead after the first grenade. Enemies start summoning um, an elemental themselves, fire elemental, but apparently completely fucked up their spirit control and now actually got killed by their own fire elemental. That was pretty pathetic. That was indeed pretty pathetic. Imagine being a cop and having the rare gift of magic and then you mess it up so bad. Damn it. Let's reload our rocket launcher. There we go. All right, Duncan moves up. Still want to make sure that we're not getting too close to the fire elemental because it's currently just running into the enemies, which is perfect. It's a win-win situ situation for us. Let me correct uh, that uh, it was a win-win situation until this uh, thing decided to go into our direction. Can't let that happen, so we're reloading the grenade launcher. By the way, one of uh, the best weapons in the game. Holy shit, and she is on point with it. She just killed that elemental like no man's business. All right, so moving up, this is the exit for us. Got to make sure that everyone stays in cover, elsewise we're going to be sniped, and we don't want that to happen. And there are a couple of enemies from the back. We're hasting um, our dwarf, uh, uh, our decker again. Unfortunately, the grenade launcher is not that accurate on very long distances. Oh yeah, that's that is some really bad odds. Luckily, we're not uh, being targeted from the other uh, police officers. So it's just... Oh, wow. And he is just staying there like a little bitch. Okay. Good. If you want to play rough, fair enough. In that case... Let's be clever enough to not position ourselves in the open. And although the shots aren't great, he will eventually go down. Specifically, if we're um, going to get an aim enhancement. I bet you he's going to move. Nope, he is not. He just does not want to get out of his cover. All right. Aim. And... Duncan takes aim. I don't want to move because uh, then we're just in the open. And that would be very, very bad to be pincered. I also don't want to move back because that would mean I got to walk all the way back here. C 
Come on, kill this clown. There we go. So that's the last um, line of defense right there. But they don't see us yet. Drone moves up and takes a lot of the heat. And one by one, everyone escapes. Moving into cover. Yeah, we're in full cover, so everything's fine. And that is the end of uh, the first mission. All right. So what's happening now is we're finding out that unfortunately Duncan and uh, our character have been compromised and it's already all over the news. The news host uh, says uh, that we are terrorists. Um, we do have no money um, and we need to delete our passports, so-called SINs. Um, in order to do that, uh, the two runners, shadow runners, offer us to join them and uh, find an underworld contra uh, contact. That contact might be able to tell us a little bit more about what happened and might be able to help us cleaning our names. And I think that's going to happen in the next episode. We're already an hour in. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed Shadowrun or have any affiliation with the uh, Shadowrun universe, feel free to uh, leave a comment down below and tell me what you think about the system. Elsewise, this is going to be an interesting experience as we are fighting our way through this uh, uh, pretty interesting game. Let's see how we're going to do as a rigger. I am looking forward for it. Thanks for watching, guys, um, and see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.